Welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I'm your host, Kim B. Davis, and this evening we have a very special guest. We have Lashana McKinnon. She is a pastor and prophet, and she's going to tell us her story of going from broken to healed. Welcome, Lashana. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad that you're here. All right, so let's get to it. So first off, Lashana, tell us what does it mean to be broken? Because there are people, and we say this all the time, oh, it's a lot of broken people walking around, but when you don't know you're broken, you know, how, what, what's the definition for that? How do we identify that in, when we see it in ourselves and in others? You know, that's very tricky um, because like you said, we identify it, we can see everything in anybody else right you know mm -hmm. we can identify oh they narcissists you know that's the new you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. work now you know they are narcissists and i was married to a narcissist and you know all these different things but when it comes to being broken mm -hmm. it's i think it's really not a one size fits all definition mm -hmm. um for me personally i believe being broken is being fragmented from yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we operate in places where we're not in touch with ourselves mm -hmm. and we don't, and we're not in touch with ourselves because we've been broken, we've been hurt, we've been wounded. We've experienced mm -hmm. some things that cause us to disassociate wherever we were at in life to function, to kind mm -hmm. of, to help us deal with that pain. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes that pain comes and it's overwhelming. It's mm -hmm. just, too much to process right you know our bodies you know different places and you know when in, in, in depending on where we at in our lives you know it just becomes overwhelming mm -hmm. so i just believe that that being broken is just really being fragmented when we're not in touch with ourselves something is broken because we are running from something and we are avoiding not feeling what it is that we need to feel so that we cannot be broken so that we can recognize that and heal so that's my definition. That was it for me because mm -hmm. I didn't know I was broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had the clue. When did you realize <laughs> that you were broken? Tell us your story. I was 37 years old <laughs> before I realized I was broken. And I, and I won't even say I realized it because actually I, I still really didn't realize it. It was literally my relationship with the Lord, you know, just praying. And I'm like, God, I feel so not close to you. You know, I pray, I fast, you know, I study. Like, why don't I feel close? Like I, if all people, I should feel close because mm -hmm. I'm doing the work, right? And so he told me, he said, you know, you have a fear of intimacy. And that was the first time that I'd ever heard a fear of intimacy, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But fast forward to like earlier that summer, he started dealing with me about intimacy, right? But I was working, got busy, caught up with life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and got away from it real quick. And I was studying in my study Bible and I came across a study and it said intimacy with God. And I just laughed. And I'm like, and I knew it was God. And this was months later. You know, he patiently mm -hmm. waited on me to get back to where he wanted me to be. And I just laughed. And I'm like, okay, God, I know I'm supposed to get right back here. So he told me I had a fear of intimacy. What is that, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I Googled it. You know, I did like we do. I Googled it. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and so when I Googled it, oh my gosh, Kim. It, it was mind blowing. It was a little, it was like three little words, three little sentences that Wikipedia had at the time, right? And it was a mm -hmm. little section and it was titled CSA, right? And mm -hmm. I'm like, what is that? You know? Right. Mm -hmm. And so CSA stood for childhood sexual abuse, right? And so mm -hmm. it was talking about what, um, how people who experience sexual abuse as children, how fear of intimacy, how they struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you that thing read me, I literally just cried. I wow. was like, you just had Wikipedia, just, just read me, Lord. I'm like, I cried because what it said basically was people who have been victimized as children, you know, we try to protect ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Because that was, you know, because of trauma and you, you know, at, at a point where I couldn't defend myself because I was a child, mm -hmm. you know, and so now... I, you know, in this place, I, I guard myself from feeling those vulnerable, intimate moments because 
this feels familiar and it feels like I can get taken advantage of again. And that's mm -hmm. scary. So let me back up from here. Mm -hmm. And so what ended up happening was I ended up literally having this thing with men, even with the Lord, you know, what mm. I, mean? I, even, I didn't trust him to a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like, oh, why you want to be so close to me? What, what do you want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you know, like stay over there. I'll still be here, you know. And so he was like, yeah, that's why, you know, there's some distance because you have this fear. And I'm like, wow. So once I started to dig a little bit more into that, I started to see, oh, my gosh, I was broken. Mm -hmm. You know, this. Um, you know, being sexually abused as a child, I was sexually abused from about four to eight. Wow. During that time. And, you know, too young to really process what was happening. So my um, coping skill that I developed very well was disassociating, mm -hmm. which was just checking out, you know, mm -hmm. I'm here, but I'm not, you know, I'm physically here, but that's, that's all you got you know right and so and that's how i you know i function and that's how i got through that well fast forward you know my body never really came out of a state of being traumatized so i always operated in that place so i always operated from a side eye with people i always operated from let me protect myself even in relationships it's like eh. You know, I would never let myself be vulnerable mm -hmm. in relationships enough for them to really be successful because I was, you know, so guarded because I had that innate feeling <coughs> of, you're going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to hurt me. You know, and so that's how I ultimately ended up discovering that I was broken. And from that point, I ended up, you know, going down the little rabbit hole of healing, you know, just discovering um, different areas, you know, different ways I was impacted, you know, self-esteem, you know, it, it goes into so many different areas, right? We think mm -hmm. that sometimes when we're broken, um, let's just say like for me, you know, um, I experienced infidelity in my marriage, right? Okay. So <clears throat> we'll say, okay, so we know that, okay, that brokenness, okay, it was in this area of infidelity. But what happens is, um, this Lord, the Lord gave me this analogy where what happens is, you know, you ever broke a glass, mm -hmm. right? You know, we break that glass and it's pretty central where the glass is broken in mm -hmm. one central place, right? Right. You sweep it up, put the, gla the glass in the garbage, and then, you know, days later, weeks later, months later, as we're going on, we find those little shards of glass in other areas, right? Right. And we and we think, I didn't know that went all the way over here. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that got over there. Mm -hmm. How did they get in this place? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what God showed me how trauma and hurt and brokenness was. We think sometimes it's neutralized in one area. And yes, it impacts majorly in one area, but it's not limited to just staying in that one area. As we go through our journeys, we discover, oh my God, I was hit over there too. It got over here too. You know, it affected my self-esteem. It affected my body image. It affected how I view men. It affected mm -hmm. how I view myself. You know, so it's, well, we, you know, we feel like sometimes it's like, it's just one area and it's mm -hmm. so not that. So many other areas are touched when we are hurt um that i don't think we really necessarily all the time we recognize and we understand that those are some great points and i like your analogy of the glass because trauma does do that now you mentioned infidelity in your marriage and i know that's traumatic in itself but talk about the shame because you talk about having low self-esteem um low uh uh positivity with your body talk about the the additional trauma of infidelity and then talk about what it's like to be a mom and struggle with that as well because you know motherhood can wreck you over the coals and make you just feel like you are the lowest thing and you just you you know you struggle yes you know <clears throat> you that so first okay so when infidelity hit me my husband was a pastor Mm -hmm. Right. We were pastoring a church. Mm -hmm. So I was an ordained prophet, which was embarrassing in itself. Right. Mm -hmm. And nobody said this to me, but, you know, the enemy was saying this to me, you know, like people like, how you a prophet? You didn't see that? You know, right. you see your husband was cheating on you. You didn't mm -hmm. know that. You know, and, I and that's not how it works. That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and when I tell you, I was literally like seeing signs, right? And seeing different mannerisms, seeing this different change. But I'm still like the person I married would mm-hmm. not do this. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I didn't marry a man who would cheat. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't marry that guy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So even though I'm seeing all of what I'm seeing, I'm like, no, it's just because his mom's sick. His mom died. Oh, you know, he's just dealing with this grief. And no, it's not that. And so it was humiliating because um, someone ended up calling someone who used to go to our church and they told everybody. Oh, wow. And you talk about embarrassing. I'm sure. Because I couldn't even heal in private. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to go through trying to heal and trying to come out of the embar- I mean, it's embarrassing. You know what I mean? No woman wants to be the one to sit there and say, my husband cheated on me. You know, that's not something a woman mm-hmm. hopes in or glories in. That's not a feel good moment for any wife. You know. No, because you are judged by that. Everybody will say, you must have did something wrong. You wasn't taking care of your husband. You weren't good enough. And so all of that plays into exactly what you're talking about. But that's not your fault. When people decide that they want to cheat or step out in a relationship or a marriage, that is a decision that they make no matter what. No matter if somebody has died, no matter if someone is sick, that is their decision and their decision alone. Absolutely. And thank you so much for saying that. But you are absolutely right. You know, I had to, you know, deal with that because even he was telling me it was my fault. You know, he was saying wow. stuff like, you know, you had been, you know, because I had started doing some healing right before he started, mm-hmm. you know, the affair. So it was like, you know, he would say things like, well, if you were like this before, you know, I wouldn't have did this, you know, as if the onus was on me. And it's like, no, you know, Mm -hmm. and I mean, I was in, I found support groups and I mean, Kim, I I drove on my birthday one year from downtown Detroit, right after work to Grand Blank. Wow. To be a part of a support group, because I mean, that's how desperate I was for help. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to that point, you know, and so just going through that and trying to recover and trying to, you know, gather myself, like you said, without all of the, what does she do? And, you know, well, you're not, and then some of the people in our, in our church knew, you know, my past with being sexually abused. And so they labeled me as being like this strong who are woman. So it was like, well, maybe you're not soft enough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, it's always (laughs) something, you know, because you got to have, you know, it's your fault in a sense, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I was literally, and at that point, Kim, I was trying, like, I was literally trying to be the best wife. You know, I was trying to, you know, do everything I could to try to, you know, be pleasing to my husband to, you know, get him to, um, not get him to, but just for him to see, you know, that I was this worthy wife right but then that was another sign of brokenness showing up you know Mm -hmm. because anytime we show up in any relationship with the i want you to see that i'm worthy of love that's already from a broken place you know Mm -hmm. what i mean we're supposed Mm -hmm. to show up in our relationships knowing already that i'm worthy of love and i'm here because i want to be and you're here because you want to be and we're choosing each other exactly exactly (laughs) you know that's simple not because i need you to complete me or you make me whole that's dangerous you know yes it is (laughs) those are red flags that anybody should run from if anybody said oh you make me whole and run girl run run (laughs) run honey run so you just mentioned signs and i want to go back to something you said a few minutes ago you talked about I, and I'm assuming that you had the fortitude where you knew you needed help. And so on your birthday of all days, instead of saying, you know what, I want to celebrate. I want to go out to eat. I want to go party. I want to go do something. You decided to go to a support group for help. 
talk about the signs because you just said one and you said when you show up and you're trying to prove yourself that's a sign of brokenness what are some other signs that people should look out for in other people and in themselves oh yes some of those other signs that you should look for in yourself when your motive for relationship is not rooted in sincerity and um, just a genuine place, meaning that you are looking for someone else to do something that you could do for yourself. Mm -hmm. Those are signs of brokenness, meaning, you know, I'm not going to, um, you know, I, I'll be happy when I get married. You mm -hmm. know, I'll be happy when, you know, this perfect person comes into my life, you know, or, you know, I'm looking for, I can't wait to receive this love so I can be whole, you know, because they, I want them to complete me. And, you know, um, those are signs of brokenness mm -hmm. because literally like those are things that those are, those, those that is the self-work and the inner work that we should be doing or have done on ourselves to be honest, before we even get into relationships, you know, absolutely. And, and these are not things that we are taught, mm -mm, you know, not we're not taught all. that mm -mm. it's taught. We're taught, you know, go to school, you know, get good credit, get a, get, get a few degrees, be, you know, get some letters behind your name. And then, you know, you build a family and, you know, we don't get to, we don't speak as much. I mean, now we're coming into an age where people are a little bit more aware. So you're hearing a little bit more about therapy and different things like that. But as a general, you know, we where we didn't hear that teaching of get you together first. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, that you should not when you are a sign of another sign of brokenness is when you enter into a relationship and you disappear. Mm. When no one can recognize who you are anymore. You know, you start, you're not doing the things that you enjoy doing anymore. You know, now you talking like they talk, you wearing what they, what they wear, you going where they go. And that's fine. Of course, in relationships, you know, we compromise and we enjoy things that our spouses enjoy and vice versa, but there should still be your identity. We should still be able to see Shauna. We should still be able to see Kim, you know? Amen. Amen. And, and when we don't, that's a, that's a sign, you know, where we will allow ourselves. This is what I say. Thank you. This is what this is. This is another sign. Mm -hmm. When we are willing to betray ourselves for love, that's a sign of brokenness. Say it again for the people in the back. We are willing to betray ourselves for love. That's a sign of brokenness. Yes. And is. what do I mean by betraying yourself for love? Betraying what you need. Mm-hmm betraying seeing all of the signs right mm -hmm. but still coming back for more that's betraying yourself that's betraying yourself you're not allowing you're you're disregarding what you need as an individual and that's a sign of brokenness mm -hmm. and when we betray ourselves that way and i did that kim i found myself and i always told my ex-husband cheating was a hard boundary for me Mm -hmm. And I always said, hey, if you ever feel like I ain't it, mm -hmm. tell me, mm -hmm. let's, let's tell me, let's mm -hmm. do this right. You go your way. I ain't going to kill you. You know, sometimes, you know, people say, you know, I, if, if I can't have you, nobody else can. I, I never told that mm -hmm. man that you are free to go. <laughs> let's just do this right. Just mm -hmm. don't do that to my heart. Like I knew that was going to be devastating to my heart. Like, please don't do that to my heart. Mm -hmm. And so that was like, it, but there I was finding myself still trying to work it out mm -hmm. even after my hard boundary had been crossed. Yes. And I'm like, what are, what, who, who, who is you? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, who, who is this person? You know, I literally did not recognize myself. You know, I had, and, uh, and, and I will say this in fairness, all of it wasn't due to my marriage, but a lot of it did happen, play out in my marriage, if that mm -hmm. makes sense, you mm -hmm. know, but it was like, wow. And that's when I realized when I look back, cause I didn't realize that in real time, but when I look back, as I began to process everything, I'm like, mm -mm. like that was not, 
not you at all. But the funny thing was, I found that it wasn't so much the cheating that what I thought would have been, of, of course it was devastating. It hurt like mm -hmm. nobody's business. I mm -hmm. mean, I literally had pain in my heart, physical pain, mm -hmm. that I would be surprised when I woke up. Because you've been I, crying. Because my heart hurt that bad. You know, we hear people say, well, they died of a broken heart. They died mm -hmm. of a broken heart. I literally thought I would die. Mm -hmm. Because I was that hurt, that physical pain. I'm like, I'm, I probably won't wake up, you know. And then when I wake up, I would be surprised, like, oh, whew, okay, thank you, Lord, another day. Amen, amen. <laughs> like, thank you, Jesus, another day. Because I didn't think I would wake up because the pain was just that intense. Mm -hmm. But there I was sitting here trying to make it work, even when this man is saying, you know, I, I had some culpability in his decision, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like. No, you know, mm -hmm. I remember we even went to therapy and this was before I found out about the affair, actually the day before mm -hmm. and the therapist said, why are you here? And so I, I let him speak first and he said, well, she was molested as a child. That's wow. Why we're, that's why we're here. Wow. <laughs> and I thought, okay, like what a way to start this off, you know, mm -hmm. like already like. To me, that said, she's the problem. Yes. yes. You know, but I thank God, Kim. I, I, I knew, you know, men don't like going to therapy, right? Not at all. Not at all. And so I was open. So I didn't, I didn't mind what kind of therapist we saw. So it could have been a man, woman. It could have been pink, purple. I didn't care, you know, because I was open. Because I knew I was I had already been in therapy before. So I, was, I wasn't afraid of self-work and whatever I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, I'm like, okay, this is a man. I got him in front of a black man. I let a black, another black man mm -hmm. you know, do. And that man just said, oh, he said, oh, no, 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 no. When he said, oh, she was molested as a child, he said, let me stop you right there. <laughs> he said, let me tell you what, what life was like for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had a, his little notepad and he had like a clipboard and some paper. And he said, he started drawing circles. Mm -hmm. He drew, he said, this is her. And then he started drawing circles around that. And he said, this is what everything, he said, that's like, that's how it is trying to get to her because mm -hmm. of what she dealt with. Mm -hmm. He was like, so yeah, like they, they have that. Mm -hmm. And it was no, oh, well, like what my ex-husband thought was going to be, oh, like, like yeah, see, you got to change and you got to do better and see you, you, you messing up with this good, good man over here, you know? And so he's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. She was, mm -hmm. she was going to have some stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you knew that when you married her. So it, it's not like it's a surprise. It this was on, no surprise. Oh, this is on you. Yeah. So I want to ask you a question as a pastor and prophet, because often in the church, we say that when infidelity happens, we preach forgiveness. And so it's funny because when you said that, I know a lot of women and we all say it. We all say it. We're like, oh, if my husband ever cheated, I'm out. Just, you know, and I've had similar conversations with my husband. I'm like, if you're going to do that, just let me know. You, you go on your way. You know, we'll work it out. But I think what, what it really boils down to, and I don't know if that's where you were headed to, it's the lies. It's the betrayal of trust that, okay, not only did you step out with someone else, but I trusted you. You broke my trust, which breaks my heart, which trust is at the foundation of your relationship. But when we go to church, people say, oh, you have to forgive and rebuild your trust. And you're like, but how do I rebuild my trust if I can't get past it? Because not everybody can. And, and this isn't telling women, you know, that you have to or you don't. It, it, it really is like you said. If you are betraying yourself and yourself says, you know what? This is a pain I can't get past. This is a pain you can't get past. And then you and God have to work it out after that and just determine what you're going to do. Share your thoughts with that on that oh, pastor. I'm so glad you <laughs> asked that. Listen, <laughs> that church, that church, that church. <laughs> the church in regards to, this is my feeling. And, mm -hmm. and I get really upset. It angers me really when 
because I grew, you know, I didn't grow up in church, but when I mm-hmm. got saved and I gave my heart to the Lord, and of course you would hear the only way you can get out of divorce is infidelity. Mm-hmm. And then some people would say, you can't even get out for that. You have to mm-hmm. forgive and different mm-hmm. things like that. But what angers me is that, because people would say, well, you know, you have to stay in that marriage because you vowed a vow to God. Yes. And you vowed a God, you vowed in front of people, right? And what angers me about that is that we found so many other things. Mm-hmm. And we seem to think those are those are okay. But the mm-hmm. Bible says that a vow, any vow that we make out of our mouth shouldn't be broken. And right. it's not that marriage weighs more than any other vow. You know, it's a vow as well, but mm-hmm. any other vow we make should be held in the same high regard. Mm-hmm. And that's hypocrisy, right? Let your yay be yay. Let your nay be nay. There we go. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I can't deal with the hypocrisy of it all. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that angers me is that we say the Lord hates divorce, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And we say that and we um, keep people in bondage with that teaching mm-hmm. because that says that he hates it. So avoid it at all costs. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what angers me about that is he hates so many other things. He hates gossip, but you can get on that phone. (laughs) Kim, let me girl pray for sister so and so over there, cuz. And I'm just calling you to gossip. I'm not calling you to pray. Right. And God hates that. You know, Mm -hmm. God hates where if you're having a moment, you vent to me, and then I go tell the person that you vented to me, uh, you know, concerning, I go tell them, that's sowing discord. Mm -hmm. God says that he hates that. Mm -hmm. When we lie, the Bible says God hates that. You Mm -hmm. know, there are so many things God hates, but we put all of this stock on this one thing. Mm -hmm. And what happens, Kim, is that we keep so many women in bondage. Mm -hmm. because now we say God hates something more than he wants that he's concerned about your soul yes Mm -hmm. and that's not and what I found through my journey I literally just preached a message Sunday called it was my pain that got me free and listen and that was things that I experienced through that pain was that wait a minute yep God hates divorce but he also allowed it Mm -hmm. And that's not something people talk about. Mm -hmm. In the book of Ezra, chapter 9, God told Israel to go in a certain land. He said, look, don't marry their daughters. Don't have your sons marrying their daughters. Mm -hmm. Don't you give your uh, daughters to their sons. Don't do Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. What did Israel do? They went in there and did it anyway. (laughs) Yep, they sure did. What did God say? Leave them. Mm -hmm. He said, leave them spouses and them kids. Mm -hmm. But you you hate the boys. Wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute, what's happening? Mm-hmm. But he, 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 there are so many examples. I mean, even where he dealt with it in Matthew, you know, he said, look, Moses allowed this. Mm-hmm. You know, he allowed divorce. He hates it because it's not his intention. It's not his perfect will. It's mm-hmm. not what he designed. It's not what he had in mind when he created marriage, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he's not saying deal with abuse. Right. He's not saying now. I thought about this, Kim. Now, granted, whatever, however, people gonna feel about infidelity and whether you can get a divorce or not, that's a commandment. Mm-hmm. And I, when I started to go through the pain, and I realized that God knew this stuff hurts. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. why it's a commandment. Mm-hmm. That was something he said when Moses rolled on that little rock. Yeah. That was one. Do not be stepping out on your spouse. That's right. Because it hurts. It hurts. Mm-hmm. Deep. Like people literally kill. Like, and God knew yes. we can't take that kind of pain. Mm-hmm. People kill over that. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. All day, every day. We see Dateline snapped. All mm-hmm. of these things. Mm-hmm. Somebody cheated. Somebody stepped out. Either the wife killed the husband, the husband killed the wife, or the couple, the 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 affair partner and the husband got together and killed the wife. And by, I mean, like it, it's a mess. Mm-hmm. So when you think about this was a commandment. Mm-hmm. Don't do Cuff it. This. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when you start thinking about that aspect, and when you start really thinking about, wait a minute, God loved me so much that He sent His only Son to die for me. Right. 
Now, why on this? Why mm -hmm. does he send his only son to die for me, but yet want me to stay in a position where I am not being able to be fully healed and fully loved properly? And I'm going to tell you, like, I desire, like, I desire to be married again. Like, I just desire companionship. Like, mm -hmm. I love it, right? Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, is that as far as, I mean, outside of somebody sleeping with me in the bed at night <laughs> <laughs> and having somebody to talk to, but I literally do not feel unwed. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that way because the love that I get from my father Mm -hmm. Like he literally takes care of me like a father. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible even says that, you know, in Hosea, he refers to um to, to refers to his to his body as his bride. Mm -hmm. You know, like we are his wife. And mm -hmm. it's not in a sexual sense, you know. I gotta right, clear it up because right. people mm -hmm. they get a little freaky, you know. You yes. gotta clear it up. You know, we ain't talking about marriage as an example. Marriage simply as an example. What you marriage but marriage in the regard of, you know, a father is going to take care of the needs, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And he's going to take care of his children. He's going to provide. He's going to protect. He's going to do all of that and even nurture, right? He's mm -hmm. going to nurture. Mm -hmm. But a husband is not even going to, is not only going to make sure you have what you need, he's going to make sure you have what you want. Yes. Yes. And that's what I'm experiencing from my father. It's like I'm experiencing him as a father and as a husband, as a covering, mm -hmm. you know. So when it comes and it's coming, you know, but when it comes, it's like I'm in a place where I've done so much work on me mm -hmm. that I can go ahead and walk into it. But I think that because of the church and we have so many, but I had to go through that hurt, Kim. Mm -hmm. If I didn't go through that hurt, I would still have all of that crazy, foolish, toxic teaching in my brain about what God, you know, then I'm not going to be pleasing to God. Because that's really my heart. Like, I mm -hmm. really want to be pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. And with that teaching, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I, that would that would have been the reason why I would have stayed. Mm -hmm. Because I got to be pleasing to God. I don't want to, I don't want to miss him. I don't want to mess up. I don't want mm -hmm. him to be angry with me. I don't want to be outside of his will. Mm -hmm. But what I found out through my pain was that God is very concerned about my entire being, mm -hmm. not just that I get to heaven. And he's mm -hmm. very concerned about that. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross. He's very mm -hmm. concerned about mm -hmm. me into heaven but he's also very concerned is that i have an abundant life here mm -hmm. he said that mm -hmm. i've come that you may have life and life more abundantly, more abundantly. yes and the amplified version i love it because it says that to you till it overflows into the full like do you have it to the full like you really are enjoying life mm -hmm. and i think that teaching you know in church with this divorce stuff we we get so outside of God wants us to enjoy life mm -hmm. that we, we push that teaching. That's, that's cause that's a carnal thought, right? Like mm -hmm. I don't care nothing about how you feel. He's very concerned about how I feel. Yes. You yes. know, he, he's not just concerned that I, you know, follow every direction on the line, but he's also concerned about my well being and, and that I'm enjoying my life because this is the life he gave me. He wants mm -hmm. me to enjoy it. He mm -hmm. wants me to be happy and to be fulfilled and to go out to concerts and enjoy myself. And, you know, he wants me to do that, you know? <laughs> but with that teaching, so I just feel like it has been very manipulative. It's been, mm -hmm. been very manipulative and it's been very toxic. And it's been keeping women, so many women in bondage. I mean, you can just see it on some of the faces of the women. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can see the heaviness on them. You mm -hmm. know, you can see they with this man. And, you know, we've been taught all of these gender roles and these false things about these uh, clone-like marriages that everybody's marriage is supposed to look the same, operate the same. And that's not it like mm -hmm. god is not afraid of our identity mm -hmm. because he made us mm -hmm. and he's not off uh, not afraid of us being authentic and when two people come together and be authentic my husband my next husband may be the cooker mm -hmm. 
And that's fine. God ain't going to be not pleased because he cooking and I'm, you know. <laughs> right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's woman's work. No, that's mm-hmm. everybody work because everybody mm-hmm. eat. Exactly. <laughs> everybody eat. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, that's that's my uh, thoughts on, on, on that, I think. So, yeah, when you go through enough, all of that religious stuff, it starts, it's, it, it comes off because it starts to, we seek to understand, mm-hmm. right? When you go through things, you want to make sense of it, you mm-hmm. know? At least mm-hmm. I do. You know, I was going yes. through like, Lord, what I do? Like, <laughs> right. Well, I'm sorry. Did I, I, you know, I was repenting for stuff way back. Like, I, that time I tripped that girl, I'm sorry, Lord, I should be that. <laughs> But it's like, you know, because we seek to like, why is this happening? You know, mm-hmm. like, what what did I do? What did I, mm-hmm. did I bring this on me some kind mm-hmm. of way? You know, mm-hmm. and so once we go through that hard stuff, the pain, the infidelities, the whatever it is that we go through, I believe those are really beautiful moments because mm-hmm. I believe that God is like, yes, like so many people have taught you so much crazy stuff about me and it's not who I am. So now I get to, through your pain, I get to introduce myself to you as, as the God that I am. So you get to know me genuinely. Mm -hmm. And through all of that, Kim, I thank God I've really got to know God genuinely. All of the stuff that I was taught about God is not who he is at all. (laughs) And, and, And you know, that it is so true because so many people rely on someone else to tell them what the word of God says. You have to study the word for yourself to understand the meaning. You Better. know, <laughs> we, we, I, I tell people that all the time. I said, D- where is that in the Bible? And they're like, oh, it's, I'm like, nope, you got to tell me where it is. Don't just tell me it's in there. Tell me where it is. And if you don't know, let's look it up and let's make sure that's what the word of God says. Because so many times people, you know, misquote and say things. And like you said, we end up in these toxic conversations. And it's true because church is supposed to be a place of joy. It should be a place where we can worship. And on some on Sunday morning, sometimes, you, like you said, you look at some people and you like, oh, you in hell. You just in hell. Because you're with this person for whatever reason, it's not working. And, you know, for everyone that's listening, it takes two people to make a marriage work. It does. It takes two people. It takes a husband and it takes a wife. And both are necessary and both are needed. Neither is more important than the other. Yeah, there's an order in the Bible. However, both are needed. Mm-hmm. And as Lashana said, a man can cook. A man can change diapers. Men can take their kids to the doctor. My husband did all of that while I was working. Um, you know, we do get caught up in whose work is whose. And especially during the pandemic, women have talked about how stressed they are, how overwhelmed they are, because so many things have fallen on their shoulders. But I want to go back to something that you said, because you talked about how we can have this toxic environment at church. And oftentimes I will tell people, I say, you know, we need to have mental health conversations. I said, because some of these people, yes, some of these people who you are seeing with the heavy forlorn faces and who just look like if somebody you will put them out of their misery. They will feel better. Mental health is such an issue. But the only thing that we talk about is we say, well, just pray it away. Well, sometimes you can't pray it away. Sometimes it's physical. It's a physical manifestation of something wrong. You can have bipolar. You could be schizophrenic. It could be all those things. Sometimes it's depression. And as someone who has struggled with depression, those are unmet needs unmet needs. I have betrayed myself on several occasions because I said, oh, I need to do this because this person needs this. And I need to do this because this this over here needs to be done and not meeting my own needs. And here I am not angry and upset and sad because my needs aren't met. But praying is not going to help. You have to do the work. So talk to us about what healing looks like and what behaviors should we incorporate, Lashana, to um, get healing? First and foremost, healing is, and I know, and I I hate to say this because I don't want it to seem cliche, Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but it is so true. Healing looks like loving yourself. Yes, it does. A person who is healed can love themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's biblical, Mm -hmm. right? The Mm -hmm. Bible says that we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Yes. So our relationships based on our relationship with ourself Mm -hmm. is how we base our, that's that's the barometer for our relationships with everything else, right? Mm -hmm. And we wonder how, you know, these relationships sometimes are affected is because it, we have to go back to us. Mm-hmm. You know, that when I found through my journey, when I was healed, when I know, and I don't want to no, know, I don't mean when I was healed, because I think healing is a journey. I am constantly yes. on this journey of healing. Mm-hmm. So on my journey of yes. healing, I have learned and discovered and found out that loving myself was a sign of healing because Kim, I'll be honest. I did not love myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Even how I talked to myself, Mm -hmm. even how I viewed myself. I never could say anything kind to myself. Mm -hmm. I did not see any good qualities about myself. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, I did not love myself enough to stop doing things that were damaging to my body. Mm -hmm. That all went back into healing. Cause for me, I was, you know, I, I am an emotional eater, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what happened was I was eating. Mm -hmm. It felt good to eat whatever, you know, the sweets and the cookies and the cake. Oh, it felt so good. It was so yummy. It was until you step on that, until you step on that scale. Mm-hmm. Until them clothes don't fit. That's right. Until you look in now, you're like, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> now, <laughs> now you got dimples in your legs. And uh-huh. that's like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. But the letdown is greater than that feel good of the food. Mm-hmm. Right. But when we love ourselves, we love ourselves to know, hmm, you know what? I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. I, I I love myself enough not to put myself through that. I love myself enough to you to exercise some self-control, right? Mm-hmm. I love myself enough to take care of me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm intentional. I would literally buy stuff for everybody else in the house, you know, skip me. You know, I, mm-hmm. I never even consider, you know, buying some for myself oh because i gotta take care of them i gotta i gotta do this for everybody else and you know always putting myself on the back burner Mm -hmm. i remember one time i you know through trauma i was i i developed this teeth grinding at night right Mm -hmm. and so i had to get like this um one of those dental uh a guard a dental guard dental Mm -hmm. guards to put in at night right and so I knew I had to get one, right? And I was biting. I mean, sometimes I wake up, my jaw, you know, is sore because I done bit myself so bad at night, you know. And so I was doing something. And so my girlfriend said, one of my close girlfriends, she said, did you buy the guard yet? And I said, no, I didn't buy it. She said, now if it was one of them kids, you would have been bought it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's true. <laughs> and the sad part about it was I still didn't buy it. She bought it. See, she said, "Cause I knew you wasn't gonna do it." Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But at that point, I didn't love myself. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, said all that to say, healing is loving yourself, no matter what that looks like. Considering yourself, not saying that you have to put yourself before. You know, not in a selfish way, but you should just as well as you are prioritizing everybody else. We should. It's okay to prioritize ourselves as well. You yes. know, like I took my son shopping, and it was just because shopping. You know, mm-hmm. and I ended up funny story. So we were out and took it. You know, took them to just get. It wasn't you know what you need shopping. It was what you want shopping, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we were in the store. My youngest was trying on something, and I had put on these boots, and I knew it had like a. It were damaged in one spot, but it was like kind of small. I just, you know, threw the boots on, moved on, right? So we get in the store. Kim, them boots were so raggedy. I happened to oh. get a, I happened to get a glimpse of them in the mirror. I said, oh my Lord. <laughs> I 
said, this boots is so raggedy. And then I thought, like, everybody was looking at my boots in the mall. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing was, is that after we did their shopping, the old me would have left out of that mall with the raggedy boots and went on about my business, right? Mm-hmm. Because I got to take care of them. That's the right. The new me said, girl, you can take care of them and you. <laughs> That's I right. Said, I said, y'all <laughs> sit right here. I went on in that store. I bought me some shoes. <laughs> but, you know, that's what that looks like. You know, just something mm-hmm. that simple, just considering yourself. Healing is honoring your boundaries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those protective boundaries, right? You know, we can have two different boundaries. You can have your defining boundaries. And that's, you know, that those are the boundaries that make us who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I don't go to parties. I don't, you know, those are your boundaries that make you who you are. You mm-hmm. know, those protective boundaries are those boundaries that say, you know, okay, if I'm in a relationship with someone and I see that the behavior is becoming toxic, if you continue that behavior, then, you know, I'll have to remove myself from this situation. Mm-hmm. You know, those are those protective boundaries. You know, when you have those in place, Healing is not necessarily something that everybody else needs to honor. Mm -hmm. It's something we need to honor within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we do that by incorporating the proper boundaries, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We have our boundaries together in place and that's what helps us to maintain our healing. Mm -hmm. You know, healing looks like if you need to go to therapy, Yes. Go to therapy. Like mm-hmm. I am in therapy right now. Like I I am an avid believer and and an advocate about, you know, going to therapy. You know, mm-hmm. especially in a society where we come from a long line of strong black women, right? Where, you know, it was considered a weakness, you know, and there's nothing wrong with you and you got this, you know, you're resilient. And a lot of times, all of those things, like I said, are signs of brokenness because mm-hmm. we try to overcompensate for the inner turmoil by having outward success. Yes. So, and that outward success don't mean you ain't broken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's like, that means you're successful. Right. But that doesn't mean you're emotionally well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, those things where you know, maintaining that, you know, I, like I said, I go, I do the work, you know, I was, you know, molested as a child. I was, you know, cheated on in a marriage, you know, those things were traumatizing, you know, Mm -hmm. so I go to a counselor every week and I deal with that, you know, and it's, and listen, I don't just, whoever's listening, whoever's watching, therapy is not for the week. That's right. Therapy is not fun like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. work I mean mm-hmm. most times I tell my therapist well I'm like I don't think you think you're doing a good job till I'm crying like what, what? <laughs> like I think you you try to earn you know you try to earn your money this week I'm over here like in tears but it's mm-hmm. like but it's work because it causes you to look at some stuff that you would rather turn away from exactly, exactly. it causes us to not be able to shut an eye on the ugly, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes healing is an ugly journey, yes. right? Mm-hmm. At the same time, it's a beautiful journey, mm-hmm. but at the beginning it's because we have to acknowledge and embrace all of the ugly. You know, one of the hardest things for me, Kim, was to accept that I had been cheated on. Wow. I had to accept that. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by accept that, not that I had, to, I validated the actions. It, what I mean by when I say I had to accept it was because I was going through all of the, in my mind, I went through all of this, you know, I could have did something different. I could have, you know, what I could have did to stop it or, you know, mm-hmm. not get to this point or get to that point and all of that stuff. I just had to say, this happened. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not my fault. It ain't my fault. It's And it's here. It's mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. So I have to accept that it's here. Mm-hmm. I don't like that it's here. Right. I don't want it to be here. 
Mm -hmm. but it's here. Yes. And yeah. that's what I mean by accepting it. Like sometimes we don't want to accept that, okay, we may not have had fathers, you know, we may not have had good upbringings, we may have had dysfunctional families, we may have mm -hmm. all of these, we have to accept it mm -hmm. to in, in order to start the process of healing. Yes. You know, all of those things um, are important, you know, and that, you know, we talked before, Healing looks like never, ever, ever betraying yourself again for any reason, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, for any reason, you know, if it's not lining up with you and honoring your beliefs and what you believe and what you desire, then don't betray yourself. Healing says, I recognize that that's not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Healing says, I see that and I recognize that and that doesn't line up with where I'm going, with who I am. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that over there. But for me, that's not, you know, I have to honor myself and honor my beliefs and honor what I stand on. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a journey. So I neglected to say at the beginning, you're also an author and you have you're part of an anthology that's coming yes. out. Talk to us about that and tell us what the inspiration behind that was. Yes, yeah, so I am super excited. So I have been wanting to write a book for years. I mean, years and years and years and years and years. And I had this block, I always have this block. And it wasn't until, and even so I was following this lady on uh, Facebook. And so she had said, hey, if you need, I'm, I'm doing this anthology. It's called Recrowning God's Daughters, you know, talking about how you lost your crown. What did you do? What was your healing journey? And, you know, what did you learn? And if anybody wants to be a part of it, you know, email me. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, should I do it or no? Or I don't know. And so, and I had never written anything yet on my own. So I'm like, can I do this? You know, I got all of these things going on in my head. And I reached out to my spiritual mom and I'm like, you think I should do this? <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so I'm like, okay. And I thought about what I was going to write about. Because the question was, what made you lose your crown? Mm. So I thought about, well, what made me lose my crown? You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, what would I write about? You know, and I'm very open about the fact that I had been molested. And so, but when I thought about that and the effects I was so young, I didn't have a crown, right? Mm -hmm, I, was, mm -hmm. I was a child, you know, mm -hmm. I was totally unaware of a crown, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I thought about it, I was like, yeah, it was this whole affair thing. Mm -hmm. And I had never talked about this publicly. This is the first time that I've openly talked about that. You know? Wow. People know that it happened and people known the outcome and what happened with my ex-husband and all of that but i still never openly talked about it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so i was like well and i got tired of people trying to tell my story you yes. know what i mean like people mm -hmm. who wasn't in your house wasn't in your marriage mm -hmm. around talking about what happened as if they was there you know You're like right. the narrator you was not there <laughs> you know I'm like don't do that, don't do that. That's when you want to sit down in front of them and say, okay, so tell me what happened. And then they start telling you like, that's not what happened. None exactly. of that. Happened. You just made that up. You don't exactly. even know. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so I said, you know what? That's what made me lose my crown. You know, through that whole thing, like it literally took my breath away. It literally, I had lost weight. I couldn't eat. Like it was, it was devastating. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it was that to legal charges to, I mean, it was so many things just back, 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 back to back. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, this is, this is the thing that made me lose my crown. This mm -hmm. is the thing where I had to recover. This is the thing that I had to readjust my crown, mm -hmm. you know, put my, put my crown back on my head. You know, I had to, you know, but this was the situation that did it, you know? And so that was my inspiration to write about that. And I went on ahead and did it. And I was having such a hard time trying to get it all together. And so, and I remember, again, I talk, talked about healing and what 
it means to how to talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I remember I kept telling myself, you are going to write this book. Yes. And I didn't say things that I would have said in my unhealed place, like, oh, you know, you're stupid. You ain't never going to do nothing. You're not going to be successful. Dot, 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 dot. I said, no. And no matter what, I don't care what kind of pinch I felt, the anxiety was getting to me. And I'm like, you're going to write this book. Mm -hmm. You're going to write this book. I don't care. You're going to write this book. And I remember talking to my therapist about it. And she said, well, you need to, she said, have you tried express, like being vulnerable when you write? Mm. Again, I am the queen of disassociating, right? I'll exactly. check out. You know, right. So I can put some words on some paper. That don't mean I was in the words. You know, I can put some words down there. And so I said, ah, you know, like, mm -hmm. well, that's why you get the big bucks, right? You know, exactly. I said, wow. And that was the piece that I needed because mm -hmm. I was not being vulnerable in my writing. Mm -hmm. That's what was making it very difficult to write because you can only write and you can only write so much mm -hmm. without being vulnerable, right? right? Because you have to express you, your feelings and different things like that. And so I remember one Saturday, the writing was due on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The Saturday before, I still hadn't had none written. But I kept telling myself, you're getting this done. Mm -hmm. And I remember that Saturday, I said, you know what? I ain't going nowhere. I'm not doing anything. I'm writing this book. And I remember, like, I told the boys, I said, listen, y'all get hungry. Let me know. I'm going to store dash y'all some food. Like, I was, like, literally that laser focused. And I got that writing done. I got everything done. And I ended up being able to submit it the, the day before it was due. Congratulations. Thank you. So I did, she, I, you know, got the edits back and all of that, or approved all those, send those back. So we're just waiting on the final um, edits and to get those in. And then, um, you know, all of our pictures will be on the back of the book and whatnot. So I am so excited. That really really boosted my confidence and just really let me know like girl god got mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you set your mind to do the bible said what in deuteronomy said if you obey me like he said i will bless all that you put your hands to do amen so i'm like you know really just walking in that and i really felt that like i got this like there are so many other things i want to do i'm like i could do that and i could do this and i can do that you know <laughs> But that that was the the motivation behind that because it was it, it was hurtful it was hurtful and it was devastating, and it was uh, and then COVID came in the midst of all of that you know what I'm saying so it was like it was a long dark journey it was a long dark journey but that definitely inspired me I'm like go ahead and write about this and it was so much healing and that shame you talk about overcoming shame where well, you can mm -hmm. tell when you can say that i mean the fact that we've been able to talk about all of this part and i ain't shed a tear like mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. people will call me i'll be crying i'm like and i will be apologizing i'm like people gonna stop calling me in a minute because i'm mm -hmm. like i was just breaking down <laughs> but i'm like but just to get to this point where where God has healed me to a place with that, that I'm not, that I don't struggle with that piece, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. not saying that there aren't any struggles and, and actually <laughs> funny story. I joined a Facebook group for like, well, I joined a few, but I joined this Christian divorce group on Facebook. Right. Okay. And I'm like, God, should I be here? <laughs> because <laughs> And because, and I only said that because some of their posts, I mean, they're like literally in like this. And I can't say that I was devastated behind the divorce because I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Not saying that it was like, I was eager to do it as well. Mm -hmm. But my more so, my devastation came from the actual affair. Right. Not actually having to get divorced. Mm -hmm. Because that was like a build up, if you will. It was, it didn't, 
it wasn't like an overnight thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like once that happened, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if I should be here, but it made me think. I said, Well, God, I thank you because I'm I'm way far further than what I thought, you know, because I'm like, Absolutely. well, let me get in these groups and let me see. And not saying that I'm I'm above being in a support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just an eye opener to let me see just how much work God has done in me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, like I could literally like Literally, like if I wanted to, like I could go out. Well, I do want to, and I will. But just say, oh, <laughs> like I could literally go on a date tomorrow. Like you know what I mean? Because and even though it wasn't that long ago that my divorce was final, but there was already been so much work that God had been doing in me with healing. It's like, like I don't, I didn't have to start the healing journey once the judge signed the decree. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? That process mm -hmm. had already been signed. Like I was. I was literally just waiting for my decree. Mm -hmm. Like, can we give me my paper? You know what I mean? Like, cause she ready. <laughs> right. I, I've graduated. I've graduated. I'm I'm on to the next level. But you know what? <laughs> but the blessing is in those groups, you can help people heal because yeah. you are healed. You're on that journey of healing, as you said, which is a lifelong journey. And so you can help people along their journey and help them get to a much more peaceful place, a happy living abundantly in God's love and doing the things that they should be doing instead of you know, focusing on all the negative aspects of the divorce. Because most likely there's, their ex-files has moved on especially if there's another one. I'm in a melanin uh, wives group on uh, Facebook and whoo, buddy, you know, those that are married to uh, spouses that have children with other, other people, whoo, buddy, mm -mm -mm -mm. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, you know, marriage is hard enough without infidelity, but it's hard. even harder when you have someone or both people are not healed. And so hard, and that's a whole yeah. Because mm -hmm. I try not to, because I'm not a finger pointer. But I, you know, I try not to, you know, be like, oh well, he, well he, because he had his stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Cause like mm -hmm. you said, it's like you know, both things were kind of playing out. You know, but it's like you know, the focus was always on my stuff. But it's mm -hmm. like, oh, hold mm -hmm. on, like you got some 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 bags over there, and you need. Right. <laughs> and so, um, but but just to your point, you know, it definitely takes two people who are, and not saying that, and I don't want to anyone to think that I am saying that two people have to be perfect to be married. Right. Well, all I'm saying is that two people have to be intentional. Yes. In order to be married, meaning. Yes. You know, you are aware, you know, and focusing and even sometimes when we are not aware because marriage will expose, mm -hmm. you know, some stuff in us. Yes. Right. Yeah. And guess what? It's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? In that relationship, what God intended, that's a place it's, it's intended to be a place of healing. Yeah. It's intended to be a place where husband can cover the wife, the wife can cover the husband and where, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That everybody ain't got to know that he's suffering with whatever he's suffering with or everybody ain't got to know that the wife is suffering whatever she's suffering with because mm -hmm. they're covering each other in that in that way. But you still have to do your own work. You know, what yes. he, <laughs> Yon LaVenza says, now do your work, you know, mm -hmm. she always, <laughs> you know, but you still have to do your work. So it's just being intentional. And then when those things come up that you don't know is there, don't just tell that person because this is a person who lives with you. They sleep with you. They're sharing a life with you. So they're able to see some things that, you know, maybe no one ever told you, you know what right. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you were unaware, but they're able to say, oh, you know, sometimes you're a little short with people. Did you mm -hmm. notice that? You know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, did you notice that sometimes you can be a little mean? Did you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, and, and in that marriage, you know, it's just that two people sharpening each other constantly, you know what I mean? And I, I, so that's, you know, like you said, when those two people is hard enough, but when you come together and you're intentional, 
mm-hmm. you know, about the relationship and you're intentional and you show up and you're able to do your work and you show up. Mm -hmm. You know, you do your best, you know, Mm -hmm. you find out, you know, when they tell you how they want to be loved and how they receive love, you know, you don't say, well, I don't do that. You know, no, 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 no. If that's, you have to show, do your work, you know, and then you have to figure out why am I struggling with this? Mm -hmm. Why Mm -hmm. don't I want to show you love in the way that you receive it? Mm -hmm. You know, because that means it's triggering and tip, tip tapping on some unhealed places in me. You know, mm-hmm. so you got to, again, do your work, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I I still honor marriage. I am not an advocate for divorce. It is an ugly process. It sucks. Um, I believe that if a marriage can be worked out, work it out. And that does not mean that you anybody stays in anything toxic, whether that's a man or a woman, you know, right. whether if it's abusive, you know, men go through abuse as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's if, if a man is being abused, a woman is being abused, things of that nature, I do not believe that. And I don't believe that that's God's heart either, that someone mm-hmm. stays in a marriage that way. However, um, I still believe in it. I still believe in the sanctity of marriage. I still believe marriage is very beautiful. And it's it's a wonderful little thing that God created. I, Amen. I just, it, Amen. <laughs> awesome. Lashana, thank you so much for coming on the Kim B. Davis show and talking to us. Tell us where we can find you. Tell us the name of the book and when it will be available and where we can purchase it. Yes. Yes. So it will be. Okay. So you can find me on mm-hmm. Facebook, um, Lashana McKinnon on Facebook. On Instagram, you can find me at authentically Lashana Renee. Um, you can find me on, I also have a coaching business that I started during the pandemic for women who've experienced trauma, um, mainly Black women, but it's for all women, but with mm-hmm. the emphasis on Black women. Um, it's called Emerge and See. Mm-hmm. And that I have a uh, Instagram page for that, and that's Emerge and underscore C emerge and s-e-e on ig and um you can reach out to me on inbox me on um to get the book the book is recrowning god's daughters um that will be available on mother's day um so um you can reach out to me on any of those platforms it will also be on amazon as well when i get all that information i'll be sharing that on my social media platforms as well so i am super excited about that and of course there'll be more things um to come as well from that as well so yeah that's where you can find me thank you lashana for coming on and talking to us about going from broken to healed and what that journey looks like it it sounds like you are on an amazing journey and you have learned some valuable lessons and you are truly helping other people so thank you for that we appreciate you Thank you so much, Kim, for having me. This was awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know that you can always find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, everywhere on social media. And Kimberly Bachelor Davis, Bachelor is spelled B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R. You can see this show on youtube.com forward slash Kimberly Bachelor Davis. You can hear this show on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google. And also our newest edition, Wisdom, which is a new platform like Clubhouse. You can hear us on there as well. We hope that you will join us for our next episode. And as always, remember, be magnificent.